today we are going to walk through programming your Crawlmaster V2 if you need to. The programming sequence for your Crawlmaster V2 is going to be the same as the Crawlmaster V1, but there are a few new things that are on the multi ESC config tool, the AM32 programmer, that you should know about because you might need to tweak them. So what we need is our USB to serial programming device. I covered this in a previous video, how you can build one. Also, you can use a USB device that is meant for the BL Heli programming suite. Those are extremely inexpensive and available all over the internet, and you should be able to find the drivers for that product where you buy the product. And if not, then uh, let me know in the comments. I'll help you find them. But what I have is our FTDI friend, which I am now pretty sure they've discontinued this particular model and they have a different model in place. And we built this up just as we did in the last video. Now what we do, first step, we plug in our USB programmer into the software or into the computer. And then our software says, hey, this is available. Um, I already had one on here, so I'm going to close the connection and I'm going to reopen the connection. So your port should show up here. We got select port and COM6. It's going to be on COM6 because that's our only option. We hit the connect button. As you can see right here, I have the check mark for direct connection. That'll just make it to where we know only one ESC is connected and it should be fine. So now that we've got it connected, I have my signal wire plugged in to our FTDI chip and I have the common ground also in this chip. I connect to my battery to boot up the ESC and after my battery, which this, this will actually boot up on two cell LiPo for programming reasons, but in operation, this ESC is three and four S LiPo only. Now we can hit that M1 button, read, connect and read settings. And this is where we know if it works. Do, 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 bam, it worked. And as you can see on the screen, all the settings. Now this is the AM32 1.82 programmer. The original one for the version one was 1.70. And there are quite a few features that are added to 1.82 that you may or may not need to touch. So I'll just go down these one more time. Reverse rotation, if you don't want to unsolder your ESC uh, wires to your motor, if you don't want to switch two motor wires, you can switch direction of your motor by hitting the reverse rotation. Complementary PWM, we really don't need to talk about this. Variable PWM, we really don't need to talk, talk about that either. Uh, just keep those checked. Bidirectional, that means forward and reverse like you want in a crawler. We definitely want that. Stuck rotor protection. This is more for UAV applications. If you want it to stall out, if it's detecting that no movement is going on, then you would select this. For a crawler, we basically sit near stuck rotor almost all the time. You get up to an object and you barely give it throttle, you're going up. So we don't want that in a crawler. Brake on stop. This is drag brake. Essentially, if you want drag brake when you're sitting on a hill, then you, you want that. So brake on stop. Stall protection. This is uh, in between our sign startup range and our normal sensorless PWM mode. So in between these right here is where your stall protection is going to protect your motor speed from dipping down too low. This is actually a good thing. It gives a little bit more consistency in that low throttle range. I like to use it, but if you want more throttle feedback, you may try having that off. But my personal preference, I like that stall protection. Sinusoidal startup. This is that extra low, super smooth, low speed control. However, the downside of this is that will create more heat in your motor and your ESC. If you're having issues with heat and you are okay with not having as much low speed control, then you would uncheck this box. However, we also have a sign mode power that we can tune with. So I will talk about that one instead. In my case, I'm going to keep sinusoidal startup on and then I will tune the sign mode power if needed. Next one, 30 millisecond telemetry. I don't use that. Uh, that's more of a UAV thing. Use hall sensors. That is not checked. We do not have hall sensor output on this particular version. Timing advance. Uh, 15 is pretty good all the way around. You may want to bump that up to 22.5. If you're having some high RPM issues, or if you want to play around with the heat on the system to see if you can increase or decrease your heat in one way or another, but typically 15 degrees timing advance, perfectly fine. Motor KV. Uh, I have this currently set at 1620 
and the motor poles I currently have set to 14. If you are using a motor and you're finding that you just don't have as much RPM as you think that you should have, uh, this particular this particular firmware shouldn't be hitting RPM limits, but if you are hitting RPM limits, let's say you switch from a castle controller to this controller, and you're finding that you just don't have the RPMs that you're used to. What I would suggest is that you drop down these motor poles a little bit, uh, let's say go to 10 pole or eight pole or something like that, or you drop down your motor KV, and that will help you out. It'll unleash the RPM a little bit because the effective RPM, the electrical RPM of an Outrunner is extremely high. And at one point in time, we needed to have some protections on this. So you can use that to limit your speed. So if you're running into RPM issues, you can lower your KV or lower your motor poles. It's easier to do the motor poles and you should be able to get your full RPM out of the system. The startup power, this is technically when it switches from your sinusoidal power over to your regular sensorless back EMF detecting mode. If you are finding some sort of gap in between the sign startup and your regular operation, if there's a noticeable gap in between those two, you would move this down. Now, if you go down too far, you're gonna run into an issue to where your back EMF just isn't strong enough and you may have stalling issues. So increase this a little bit. Um, alternatively, if you are finding that it's kind of like stalling and hiccuping, that may be because your startup power is too low and you would want to increase that. So we have this set at 100. We also have a PID loop for RPM in the controller. So typically you're not ever going to really have to adjust this. However, if you go to a really low KV motor, like a thousand KV, you can probably get a little bit better performance by moving that startup power down. Nice, a uh, smooth transition in between the sign startup power and the regular mode. So just as a heads up, you can try adjusting that. I have found that the hundred on this particular hardware is pretty much universal. PWM frequency is currently not enabled for changing. We actually have a modulated PWM frequency on this. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that too much, but this actually doesn't stick at one particular PWM. Beat volume, this is just the alerts when you boot it up, how much do you hear? Uh, five is a pretty good setting. If you find that your in runner, let's say, is not quiet or is not loud enough for you to hear and you want to hear that startup just to be sure then you would increase this or if you have an outrunner and let's say it's beeping so hard that it's glitching out your servo or your radio but it can do that then you would move that beep volume down and it's going to help you out there uh, typically i don't ever mess with that though it's set at a five stop break level this is essentially our drag break i'm going to keep that at 10. Sign startup range. This is really similar to a throttle curve. How much of your throttle do you want devoted to that low speed sine wave startup? I like to keep mine between 15 and 20. It works pretty good. If you want more low speed modulation, you would increase this. And if you want less low speed modulation, and if you really don't want to sit in that sign mode for very long, then you would decrease this sign mode range. Now, sign mode power. This is an extremely powerful setting on your controller. I do not suggest that you mess with this very much. However, if you're running four cell LiPo on an Outrunner that is 1800 kilovolts, kilovolts, oh my God, uh, KV, it's not kilovolts. If it's 1800 RPM per volt or higher and you're running an Outrunner on four cell LiPo, you may want to reduce this sign power down to five. So if you're having heat issues, specifically running four cell LiPo with an outrunner, move this from six to five. If you're running an inrunner like this, the six is gonna keep you from having glitching and stalling when you're in that sign power range, which is why we put it at six, because it is pretty universal to where you're not gonna have problems until you hit that four cell LiPo with a higher KV outrunner, in which case, that is the one time that you would want to adjust it. Move it down to a five, see how it is. If you're still feeling like you have heat issues, which you probably won't at five, then move it down to four and see if that still works out for you if you don't have any sort of issues with cogging or anything like that. Uh, in particular, if you have a really high OD ratio on a comp rig and you're running a little bitty outrunner like that, you're probably gonna have to move down to that five sign power range just so you can keep everything happy. But otherwise, we have it set stock for six, relatively universal, but again, Outrunner on 4S LiPo with a high KV, you're probably gonna move that down to five. Otherwise, nothing changes. Running brake level, this is your drag brake while you are on throttle. I am a crawler, I'm gonna have it at 10, so there we go. 
Uh, we go to the flash screen. If we ever had a firmware update for this particular model, which is not very likely at this point in time, then we would, you would load firmware and then you would upload it after doing that. Our input, our final one, this is where you can set your low and your high threshold for your throttle as well as the neutral point and the servo dirt deadband. If you are having troubles with your ESC arming and you've already got your uh, midpoint adjustment way off to the side and it still isn't wanting to arm, then this is where you would deal with that. However, you shouldn't have an issue on this one. It's, it, it seems to be arming just fine for me on all my radios without doing the midpoint adjustment on there. So let me know in the comments what you are finding, but the stock settings should be good. Uh, low voltage cutoff, it is turned on. 320 is 3.2 volts per cell. We will need to double check that this is properly hit when it's running in sign mode. What we're finding is that there's really not much load in sign mode operation. And some people are reporting that it is, it's draining their battery pretty much all the way down by the time it hits this low voltage cutoff that you know they feel like their battery got drained too much. In which case you can either increase this to 3.5 volts per cell or while you're driving, occasionally give it a little blip of throttle outside of that sign mode range and you should know pretty quickly if you should be hitting your voltage cutoff. Temperature limit, this is Celsius. We have this currently set to 90 degrees Celsius. We do have an RTD on the board. So if your system gets to overheating, it will go ahead and throttle back down for you. Current limit amps. This particular board has a discrete amp sensor and this is a really accurate amp limit here. 40 amps is pretty much good enough for crawling. And so we can just leave it at that. Uh, let's say you want to play around with it. You want to find more punch or something like that. You could up that. I don't really recommend it personally, but that is something that you could potentially tweak around with. I'm not going to. Uh, last thing here, the checkbox car basher type braking double tap to reverse. We're not bashing, so we don't want that. We would hit the save settings if we changed anything on here. And then boom, it says up at the top, right EEPROM successful. And that's pretty much it. If you do have any questions about programming or the sequences, then you can either check some of my earlier videos on it or ask me down below and I will do my best to get to them. So hopefully this helps you out. And particularly in the one case where you may be running four cell LiPo and finding some heat issues, that is what you will do to mitigate it. So as always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.